Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching another Photoshop tutorial. This week, I'm going to show you how to recreate an effect I remember achieving in camera back in the 80s and 90s. It was a starburst filter effect. Now, this effect can be quite complicated, but today we're going to keep it really, really simple, and we're going to create a starburst filter effect that's going to give a beautifully diffused image. Let's have a look. So this is the picture we're going to use. It's got a couple of good points. It has lots of very small spots of light all the way around it. Now, each one of those spots of light is going to come a starburst effect. But to achieve it, we need to use a few layers. Now, notice at the moment we have just one layer, the background layer, and we need another couple of copies of that. So let's go to Layer, choose Duplicate Layer, and click OK. Then back to Layer again, Duplicate Layer once more, and click OK again. So now we have three copies of the same image. Now, let's start with the top layer here. I'm going to put a filter effect on that. So let's go to Filter, choose Blur, and then Motion Blur. Now, the Motion Blur is an interesting filter. Normally, it's used for achieving effects like this, uh, a kind of moving, zooming effect. But we're going to use the Motion Blur to make a starburst effect. Now, to do that, we need to change a few settings. First thing we need to do is change the angle. Now, you can get the angle by moving this little line around here to whatever you like. I want an angle of 45 degrees. Now, getting it manually is quite tricky, so it's easier just to type the number directly onto the filter, like so. Now, the distance, I'm going to bang that right up to maximum, OK? 998. There we go. For some reason, that's your maximum. There you are. And click OK. So that gives in that really strong, streaky, blurry effect. Now, I know it looks a little bit weird at the moment, but stick with me. This will work. Right, let's turn that layer off and go back down to the layer underneath. Now, we need to click it to make it active. And then go back to Filter, choose Blur, and Motion Blur once more. Now, we're going to use the same motion blur with the same distance setting, but the angle we need to change. Now, we need to make this not 45 degrees, but minus 45 degrees. Now, that'll make it 90 degrees to the first set of filter we put in. So this blurring streak is going at the opposite direction to this blurry streak. Now, very important here that you click the top layer to make it active. And we're going to change the blend mode so we can put these images into one. So where it says Normal, let's click the little down list and choose Screen, like that. Now you can start to see this effect working. And you get that kind of cross-hatching look, which is really nice. But we've got two layers, but we really need this to be one. So let's merge these two down, come to Layer, and choose Merge Down. Not Merge Visible, not Flatten Image, just Merge Down. OK, now that's merged them together, but we still can't see the sharp image through it. So back to your blend mode once more, and change the blend mode this time to Screen again. So that now screens the image off. You can see through it, and it gives this lovely, bright, white, diffused look. Trouble is, it is a little bit too bright. Using the screen mode a couple of times does tend to do this. So here's a couple of tricks you can do to really give this picture the final touch. First of all, Go to Image, Adjustment, and Levels. Now, looking at your Levels histogram, you can see it's kind of pushed over towards the right-hand side, so this picture is a bit bright. Let's get the little pointer from the left-hand side, the black slider, and bring it in. That'll just darken our picture down like so. OK, that's lovely. Now, I'm happy with the whole diffused starburst effect, but on the back of her head there, I don't want it coming through her hair particularly. So I'm going to get an eraser tool. You could use a layer mask if you wish, and just drop the opacity of this tool down to about 50%, somewhere like that, and just erase away a little bit off the back of her head. So it has that nice diffused look still, but only diffused where I want it to be. OK, so there we are. That's what we started with, with the straight picture. And by applying our nice starburst diffusing effect, we get a really, really smart looking image. Now, this technique can be used to create more interesting starburst effects, but those are more advanced techniques. But don't worry, I've got a video on how to do that too. So check out my website at www.gavtrain.com and find out how to use this starburst filter effect on dark nighttime images as well.